All right, good afternoon. Hope you guys are having a good day. That'll open it up for questions. Uh, Andre, just how's Daniil doing? And then you feel for a guy like that going through this again? He's doing good. Um, you know, I feel bad for him as hard as he works and how hard he worked to come back. And, you know, the type of human being that he is, not just how great of a player he is, you know, that that happened to him. Uh, but it's part of football, and I think he understands that too. And so, um, I just wanted to get the surgery done and, and get healthy. How do you move forward? Just, I know you can't replace a guy like that, but in terms of this production, how do you move forward? Oh, well, you, you know, you got to have faith in the, in the guys that we have. You know, um, you know now uh, Kenny and, and Pat are going to get a chance to play, and um, I've been preparing them for this moment the whole season. And uh, so they get their chances to go out there and, and show what they can do. And, and uh, so I'm looking forward to that too. And uh, that's what you do. You know, it's their, it's their time. Their number's called. It's time for them to go play. How did uh, Kenny look at his 16 snaps on Sunday in your estimation? Well, he did pretty good. Um, he had one pressure at, at playing at defensive end. Uh, he played physical. Um, so it was good. It was a good uh, time for him to get a chance to go out there and play. And I'm um, looking forward to him getting more numbers this weekend. Andre, with some of the, the late game scores that you guys have given up, what's the key to kind of stopping that trend? Well, I, I think it's a couple of things. Yeah. You know, I, I think one is most importantly, we got to stop giving up the explosive play. That, that's the number wow. one thing. You know, the, uh, the, the, the whole thing that flipped it at the end of the game, you know, the, the one play on Breland, um, and it should have been an interception. It wasn't a good thrown ball. And if Breland would have got his hand around, head around instead of tipping the ball, and intercepted, and the game would have been over. So I think that's number one. I think number two, that we got to get to the point to where instead of trying not to lose the game as players, we're, we're going to win the game. You know, and I think, you know, we got some guys that are trying not to make a mistake in that situation and try not to be the guy that causes us to lose the game. And that mentality has to flip. It's got to be 11 guys on the field that believe that they're going to go win the game. I'm going to make the play to win the game. And so that's kind of the thing that we've been driving in the player's head this week. It sounds like you're saying psychologically there's a buildup of like when this happens before, going into it next time, you might be even more prone to keep doing that. Yeah, and I, and I just think we got to do some things in practice to put them in that situation. You know, good against good. Offense and defense, it's high-pressure situation. You put them in that situation, you know. But um, the point that I made to the defense on Monday was, you know, and, and Harrison and Griff and Kendricks and Barr, um, you know, they've been here when that's been a part of our nature. You know what I mean? In, in the years past, the defense wanted it on them at the end of the game. And we won a bunch of games in the past around here because our defense was on the field at the end and they were able to win it. And those guys had that mentality. So we got to get our group back to that mentality. I mean, there's some guys that are in that huddle that's been here that understand that. And we've got to get the other guys to come along with that same mentality that it comes down to at the end, we're going to win the game. We're out there to win the game. We want that pressure. And um, you know, that's, that's something you build. That's something that, uh, that you have to develop to become a part of you. And it's, you know, it's our job and the older guys uh, on the defense's job to bring the other guys along. What do you like about Kenny's game? It seemed like he sort of emerged there in, in preseason. Well, he's a high motor guy, um, plays with a lot of intensity. Um, I think the biggest thing that's changed for him uh, from when I first got him a year ago before he got hurt is now he has technique. So he's got technique to go along with uh, the constant motor and the effort that he has. So that's the thing that's helped him through these practices make a ton of plays because he's taken his, his effort, his want to, his desire, and he's learned technique to go along with it. So I, to me, I think that's the biggest thing that impresses me about him. And I think if you talk to any of the players, offense or defense, and you ask him who's been the most impressive guy out there in practice, I bet you his name would come up a lot. What impresses you the most about Lamar Jackson's ability to throw the football? Um, he's got a strong arm. He can throw the deep ball well down the field. He can throw well on the run. Um, I think he's gotten better over the years with his accuracy as a quarterback. Um, so he's a, he's a tough guy to defend. Ways 
that you can defend him? I mean, do you consider putting a spy on him with his running ability or what have you? Well, you know, he he's a little bit different different than than uh, Kyler Murray than we played in Arizona. You know, when we, when we I mean, when we played Arizona, their quarterback ran off of passes, off scrambles. Okay, Baltimore has designed quarterback run plays. That's a big difference. They actually use him as a running back, so it, it makes it difficult. Um, and so you have to be on point with who has the dive, who has the quarterback. Now, they make it even more difficult because they pull linemen too, right? So they're pulling two linemen from the backside to come over there with him to create extra gaps over there. So um, you have to be real, uh, real precise on your run fits and how you how you fit him up, and you have to gain an extra. We have to gain an extra player to the quarterback. So I gave a perfect example: a normal zone read situation. You tell one of the ends, you got the quarterback. The inside linebacker has a dive, and it's simple. The, the option rules are simple. But once you start adding pullers, okay, and flashers coming back with him to give you extra blockers, you have to gain extra guys over to have enough guys to be able to fit him up. So that's the difficulty in defending him in the run. So they're two totally different animals. You know, in Arizona, it's off of him dropping back and making plays with his legs. Uh, against Baltimore, they're running this quarterback. So that's what makes him difficult to defend. Andre, when's the last time you had to, you know, execute like option rules in the <laughs> NFL? Uh, in the NFL, none. All right, in, in college, yes. In college, uh, I had to defend it a lot. Uh, but in the NFL, none. That's, that's what's unique about Baltimore is, okay, I'll give you a perfect example. In college football, you know, when people get ready to play Army, or they get ready to play Navy, or they get ready to play Air Force, that's a tough week of practice for that team because you're trying to figure out how to fit up all these different uh, types of options. And to get all that done in a week is difficult to do. Well, that's what you have with Baltimore, okay? So it's, it's not just the zone read that everybody talks about, it's different. You got load, you got a double load, you got midline, they got all different kinds of weight, double arc uh, option. So they got all different kinds of option football, just like you're playing Army, Air Force, or Navy. And so you've got to spend the week making sure that your players uh, understand where you fit on each style of option football that they run. And the other thing that makes it difficult, then they come back and run regular pro football run plays at the same time. So, um, you know, you're, you're trying to defend two different styles of runs throughout the course of the game. I think it is about him that makes him durable enough to do that. Does he not take full shots or? No, he, he gets hit. I mean, that's, that's the one thing that I've noticed on tape. He takes some shots. And, uh, I think I saw a couple uh, a couple weeks back where I had saw where uh, some people in Baltimore were saying they don't they don't protect him like they protect the other quarterbacks. Well, the difference is he's running with the ball as a running back, you know. So when you're running with the ball as a running back, you're going to take the shots that a normal running back takes. Um, so obviously he's a tough guy because he's taking a lot of shots throughout the course of the games, um, and he keeps going. So um, so he's a good football player. Is there anything you can learn from what Cincinnati did to sort of hold that offense down a couple weeks ago? Oh yeah, you, you can look in there and see some of the things that they did that was that was pretty good. That kind of uh, carries over to to what we do, um, um, you know. But you know, he missed a couple of throws in the game that could have made a difference. I think it was a couple of turnovers in the game also too that made a difference in the game. So, um, but we just got to make sure we're on point in, in how we have to fit him up uh, through the course of the week. When you're talking about all the rules with, with power runs and some of the, the things that they have in their offense, how many of your guys have played against this given how much zone stuff there is in the league and, and probably in college as well? Uh, I would say most of them haven't seen the volume since they were in college football, you know, you, you, or unless they play Baltimore. Um, because it's different. No, no, other, no other NFL team is doing with their quarterback what they're doing with their quarterback it's, it's different. Do you have a sense of, of whether or not Mike has a, has a shot to play this week? I imagine he's probably going to do everything he can to try to play against his whole team. Uh, well, we're, he's going to come out today and do some things, and we'll see how the week goes, and hopefully hopefully we'll have him on Sunday. 
Andre, what did you make of uh, how Dallas put the extra two offensive linemen in the backfield? It seemed like you guys counteracted that pretty well. Uh, how did that work? Yeah, we made an adjustment on that at halftime. You know, when they put the two guys in there like that, we call it like a bone look, like, uh, you know, back in the day with Oklahoma. Um, and so we made an adjustment at, ha at halftime um, with what we did with our front that flattened everything out and made them, you know, get away from that. But that was a, that was a good deal that they did early in the game and, you know, made us have to work as a coaching staff to figure out the best way to fit it up.